Hey, I'm Richie923, and I'm on Geek Status. And I'm here to take you through a tour of my Power Rangers toy exhibit, which I call the Morphin Grid. But first, it's Morphin Time! Tyrannosaurus! So, I'm a kid of the late 80s and early 90s, so I was into things like Ghostbusters, Ninja Turtles, X-Men, Batman, just when it's watching Jurassic Park in theaters. And the next thing you know, Fox Kids is airing this promo for this new superhero show where there's a superhero team doing some martial arts against some monsters, and then they have dinosaurs and robots involved. I'm like, what is going on? If you were a fan of Fox Kids in the 90s, you were getting these in the mail, Totally Kids Magazine. And this issue in particular, they gave a preview of the first episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and this amazing one sheet of the first wave of toys. And I remember just staring at this page for hours, the designs, and I'm trying to figure it out. It was looking kind of cool. And then lo and behold, they air the first episode and I'm like, what is this? I'm like, why are they dancing and posing and doing this Captain Planet count off and with these catchphrases? But then they showed the Zords and that's when I started paying attention. There's something about how they filmed it, and I kept watching the show, going back to this one sheet, and still kind of doubting it. I remember there was one point where I was toy shopping with my mom, and, and she picked up the actual deluxe Megazord, and she's like, uh, is, this, is this something that you would want? And I was like, nah, kind of passed on it. And I had a best friend, a neighbor down the street, who was all about the first episode, and I was making fun of him for it. And then he was the first one on the block to show up with the first 8-inch Red Ranger, and I was like, yeah, let me see that. So I started playing around with it and all that. And there was something, there was something fun about it. Something about the action scenes where they, they got a little silly, but they included some martial arts. And then when they were powered up as rangers, it, it became kind of like kung fu cinema almost, the way they shot it. That's when my brothers were also watching the show with me. And one of them pointed out, I think they kind of cut scenes from a Japanese show and put it in. Because you notice the kind of film quality difference there. And then the theme song was growing on me. And the next thing you know, I made my own little prop power morpher. I show up with a paper morpher and I'm like, hey, check this out. And then that's when I, I was kind of showing that I started liking the show myself. And then they started showing the promos for the Green Ranger showing up. And I was like, okay, what's going on here? Because the first run of episodes, it was pretty corny. It was kind of wash, rinse, repeat. And then when you watch that episode with the Green Ranger and he shows up in the Megazord cockpit right after they form it and I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. They're kind of taking something very formulaic and flipping the script on it. I was, I was, I was kind of locked in. Actually, no, I was very locked in. And then by that time, I was actually trying to go out there and find the Megazord and because the show had already blown up, I wasn't able to find it. The only Megazord I could find was the simple basic version. But hey, it was something cool and I took it. And yeah, this, the show was just growing on me. It started getting a serious tone, and the fight scenes with the putty started to get a little better. The music was getting great. I was into karate. I enjoyed the martial arts aspect of it. And this whole thing was just ended up speaking my language. And the next thing you know, I'm learning all the different moves and the different poses. I got my first Morpher, and I had that basic Megazord. And then around season two, I got my first Red Ranger. And it was during that time when my dad's seeing the dinosaurs morph into the Thunderzords, and he's just like, they want you to buy toys every year, don't they? So my dad knew. He, he had a hunch that this was clearly a gimmick to sell toys. And he's not wrong. My first Megazord was the Ninja Megazord. I got that as a gift. I don't know, by that time, my parents thought I was getting a little old for toys. So um, I ended up getting this Ninja Megazord, and they wanted me to return it. But they said if I got my black belt that year, then I can keep it. So I worked hard. Got that Megazord, got my black belt most of all. And then it became Power Ranger Zeo. And from there the show just grew and grew. By the time In Space was wrapping up, I was already kind of falling out. But I was always in and out because I knew the show continued. So I would kind of keep up once in a while, just kind of taking a peek in on, on what's new with Power Rangers. Maybe buying a Morpher, buying a Megazord here and there. And then all throughout that time, the internet was booming. So us fans, where did we turn to? At the time it was alt fan Power Rangers. 
and then we discovered things like Ranger Central and Ranger Board, and then that's where the discussion came up that this does come from a Japanese show known as Super Sentai. They've been doing it since the 70s. So, fans from around the world are filling in each other on information, we're importing episodes, we're importing toys, and then the fan base just starts to grow from there. It was around 2003 when ABBA Ranger first came out, and I was able to get the DVDs from Chinatown, and that was my first Super Sentai series. And I'm gonna hold that as one of my soft spots because I got a chance to see a full Japanese series and then the next year after become Power Rangers Dino Thunder. And both series were pretty awesome and that was just something pretty cool to experience as a Power Rangers fan. So it's around the time I started building my toy displays, I just realized I just have to start filling in the gaps because I ended up with every Red Ranger, Megazord, and Morpher from every season. And then here you have the entire Ranger history wall behind me. It's evolved over the years, but pretty much this is what I ended up building. I call the Morphin Grid, showcasing everything from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and showcasing both toy history and show history of Power Rangers up until today. And the recent rumors is that they're wrapping up after the 30th season, so luckily I have just enough room to kind of cap off this legacy of Power Rangers. So let's jump right in. First, Morphin Time. Now that I'm in gear, let's get started. Here in the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers section, my goal was to show many different aspects of the show. Everything from all the characters, all the zords, all the different combinations, and also different plot points when I can. But most important, everyone knows that MMPR has been revisited over the years, so I wanted to showcase the different toy history. Everything from the premium Bandai stuff, the newest stuff from Hasbro coming out since they're the new owners of the brand, and the classic original Bandai America stuff, as well as the original Bandai of Japan stuff, the original stuff from Jew Ranger. So as you know, the show is produced in Japan by both Toei and Bandai, so it was my feeling that the truest representation of the show would come from Bandai. So the premium Bandai stuff, the Soul of Chogokin Megazord, to the SH Figure Arts, the Legacy Power Morpher, um, all of that is what I feel would be the most show accurate and in the middle, that's a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive 24 karat gold power morpher signed by Jason David Frank, the Green Ranger himself. And again, I wanted to show the different story beats. So here we see that the Red Ranger ends up with the shield and coin at some point uh, as they gain their carrier resort. And when it comes to Hasbro, I'm glad they're diversifying the toy line by including many of the villains now. On top of that, uh, they have new technology where they can replicate a character's face, so I wanted to show that in this toy line. And to validate owning duplicates of an item, whether it's a figure or a roleplay weapon or a zord, if I'm going to have multiple versions of it, I want to include that with the storytelling. So I get to show different modes or anything like that. So for the Green Ranger section, I wanted to represent the Green with Evil miniseries where they introduce him as evil and then he ends up joining the team. Eventually that will be the Zord Ascension Project Dragon Zord in battle mode. And then under that display, I have a tribute to the Return episode where the Green Ranger comes back, Return of an Old Friend, which introduces us to the original Bandai 1993-1994 toy line. And this morpher in particular is my original power morpher, the one I had as a kid growing up. And I would bring this with me everywhere as a kid, because you never know when you have to morph. And I brought it with me to Power Morphicon, and I met Austin St. John himself. Morphin time! Oh, you morphin time! Wanna do it again? He stole Jack my line, man! It's morphin time! Tyrannosaurus! So I have that in my collection now, it's pretty cool. And I did the same thing with this pilot episode custom morpher that I built. Uh, this is what you see a lot in the intro credits and in the first episode, Day of the Dumpster. Um, so because it has a Mastodon coin, I wanted to have Walter Jones do a photo op with that. I met him at New York Comic Con 2021. And here are the reversion Megazords from 2010 and the Legacy line. And again, here I'm practicing to show different themes, whether it's imagery from the show, maybe a specific episode where it's about a certain ranger fighting a villain, Maybe showing different poses, different finishing moves. Again, trying to keep it screen accurate and there are a few Easter eggs, like the battle bikes. They use it in one episode and they didn't even use it. It was in the background. But we knew they existed in the toy line. And my little Easter egg is I have it just as it appears on the episode with them not even on it and in that formation. And then here we have the original Jew Ranger toys from Japan. And I wanted to feature toys that we didn't get here in the States. Things like the Thunderslinger, and the Morpher belt buckle. And here is a boxed 
Dino Buckler, signed by Yuta Mochizuki, the original Tyrannum Ranger himself. And in the middle is my mini collection, things in different scale, even including the large 3-0 figure. And that Megazord is the basic version, that was the one I ended up finding when the main Megazord was sold out. So that's a good way to kind of have the foundation of this toy exhibit. And then at the top is the latest from Hasbro, the Lightning Collection Power Weapons and Ranger Helmets. These are slowly coming out over time, so you can see the ones that are kind of stand-ins for now. Uh, those I got as a Halloween helmets from Disguise, and those are some extra power weapons that I had lying around in storage. I'm sure I'm going to have to clear out that wall to hang the power weapons, but for now, um, that is my shadow box showcasing my time at the different Power Morphicons over the years. I got a chance to meet both Red Rangers. I got a signed Ranger key set from the original Mighty Morphin team. What is it like to be a retired Ranger? I have a tic-tac-toe autograph with Ron Wasserman. He was the guy that composed and performed the Power Rangers theme song. Totally cool guy. And I was waiting online to get his autograph. And by the time I got to him, he's like, you know what, you spent all this time waiting for me, let's make your time worth it. So we played a game of tic-tac-toe, and that was my autograph with him. An event like Power Morphicon is awesome, because for a show like this, it seems like it's a very uh, niche fan base. But for a show to get this kind of love, where it's like, it's almost like, I want to call it the new age Star Trek. It has the same kind of spirit, where it's kind of low budget, with, with action that's an acquired taste. I'll say that. And to see it gain popularity and a fan base that's throwing conventions and collect the re-releases of toys, uh, I feel it's like the spiritual successor of Star Trek. And the original Power Dome playset, or as we call it, the Command Center. And from there, it taps into the essence of the Morphin Grid, which I would display as the Morpher, Red Ranger, and the Megazord. So this is my personal fidget shelf, where it has things like my everyday Morpher, and from there, that's the basis of me building the Ranger History Wall. And to know that over the years, they've just refreshed the idea. So we have about 30 different versions of the show to enjoy. And I think that's pretty awesome, too. And I wanted to build it in such a way that reflects many different things about the show. So it's the toy history. And if you are a Ranger nerd, you know about the different production eras of the show. So everything from the Mighty Morphin era and that goes into the Zordon and the post-Zordon era, completing the Saban era, and then of course, the Disney era. And it was during this time where I started importing a lot of the Super Sentai stuff, because it was at the same time Bandai America started modifying the Power Ranger versions. So I started importing the Super Sentai toys to keep it show accurate. And next, the Saban Brands era. I have a little gap here because this is where 2010 would be. And this is where Saban Brands returns to produce Power Rangers. And they try to keep it close to represent the Super Sentai timeline also. So typically the Japanese version would air one year and the following year would become Power Rangers. In the middle of the Saban Brands era, they break up the formula and start jumping around the Super Sentai timeline. And that continues on to the Hasbro era. And luckily it ends right here. Uh, I know that we have Cosmic Fury coming, so I have a space dedicated just for that. Hopefully it kind of symbolizes a return to the history of the Morphin Grid. But either way, got a spot dedicated for that last one, and that should be a nice way to kind of wrap it up from here because I'm running out of space and patience to keep up with this toy line. No, I'm just kidding. It's fun, but you got to kind of stop somewhere. You know, you need an end game, otherwise it's going to keep going. So for me, I'm kind of glad it's stopping right there. But because I was importing the Super Sentai toys at the same time, there are toys which I call Super Sentai on standby. And these are shows that have not yet been adapted into Power Rangers. And then to reflect what's in-universe and not in-universe, you know, canon, not canon, that sort of thing. If a toy has an angle to it, it's in-universe. If it's on standby, it's flush against the wall. So that way I can represent where movies come into play, or what's strictly Super Sentai and what's not. And then this section here, the actual media for the show, I call the viewing globe. And this is Shout Factory's Legacy Collection, everything up from the original Mighty Morphin up to the 20th anniversary season Megaforce. I have the other Lionsgate releases for the later seasons, the movie DVDs and Blu-rays, 
and the guidebooks. You gotta have the guidebooks. Everything showcasing the full history of the show and what I call the blueprints for the Morphin Grid. These early photo books detailed so much about the show from the costume design, the door design, the weapons, and that was my inspiration to build this Morphin Grid. In the Japanese Drew Ranger guidebook, I was able to get signed by the cast of Drew Ranger themselves. Soundtracks, again, the music has always been rocking to me. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers had the best soundtrack. I listen to it when I work out, it's amazing. And I had a bucket list to learn that awesome guitar solo in the intro. I was able to pull together the entire song and did a whole cover of it. And like I said, I love the design so much. It goes to fashion, it goes to jackets, it goes to shoes. And this was one of my holy grails. Uh, Power Rangers RPM is one of my favorite Power Rangers seasons. When I first watched it, I, I thought it kind of went too extreme, too serious, too dark. But then years later I watched it again and I was like, this is actually pretty cool stuff. Uh, I just had to have some of the gear for that. So this is a custom jacket from SentaiJackets.com. You should check them out. Um, totally awesome design here. I mean, I know there's a lot to check at the door for a show like this. It's a totally fun and goofy show and I love it. I draw a lot of inspiration from it. It needs and inspires big imagination. And that's something that I always valued about myself. You kind of saw how they film the show. And as an aspiring filmmaker, I saw the tricks of the trade and I wanted to kind of do stuff like that. I'm working on uh, a full Ranger cosplay for Comic-Con and you know, it's kind of inspiring me to keep myself in shape. And I'm trying to think, would I make a good Power Ranger? I mean, I'm trying to save the world with toys. I do teach martial arts while doing the day-to-day -day stuff. It's just a fun show to have on. I keep it on as background noise sometimes. I still get a kick out of it. I have a reasonable amount of knowledge on it. I have the tools to do something cool with it. So why not just lean into this and start exploring the show again with the fans? Because there's a lot that I haven't seen. And now that Hasbro is the owner of the brand, you know, there's talks of them rebooting it for a new audience. But at the same time, they're re-releasing the Lightning Collection, Mighty Morphin stuff, stuff we never got as a kid and now we get to have it now as adults. You know, just revitalizing that original love I have for the show today. But let's see what happens with this new reboot. Maybe if they play the cards right, have the right chefs in the kitchen. Just as long as there's martial arts, transforming robots, cool toys, and puns. They have to keep the puns. Because I'm a pun guy. I always love more puns. It's more pun time. I guess the only thing I wish is my favorite color was red, but it's actually not. Design. That's more like it. Yeah. I'm Richie923. And I'm on D-Stats. And remember, own your passion.